Hello everyone, thanks again for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Uh, first, uh, there's still a, a small stream flood advisory here for the uh, area from Dot Lake to Tana Cross. Uh, for the remainder of uh, this afternoon, obviously, and then into this evening, at which time then it'll probably end. Still some high water ponding on one of the roads in through there. Rainfalls really led up from what it was uh, yesterday and Saturday night. So rivers are slowly receding there and this should end probably this evening. Moving on to the fire danger chart. Uh, up here in the uh, Kilbrook zone, uh, barely, uh, barely making the high fire danger uh, category there, the threshold over in this area. Actually, it looked like it was a little bit less than it was yesterday, but still there. And also one showed up here around Fairbanks, Central Tanaw Valley there. Um, even though they had the rain, uh, temperatures lower 70s today, winds gusting 20, 25 miles an hour. So that boosts the fire danger there a little bit from uh, yesterday. And the extreme area expanded up here over the upper Yukon Valley and the flats there around the uh, porcupine to roughly the Yukon River in that zone. And moving on to satellite imagery, you can see today uh, westerly flow, obviously, by the movement of the clouds here. One band coming across, breaking up as it gets toward the eastern interior. Just some scattered showers there, but uh, the afternoon heating triggering thunderstorms in this area and even isolated back here with that patch of clouds. Another uh, system coming down or coming in from the west here in that uh, westerly flow coming over a big area of high pressure over the uh, Bering Sea. Otherwise, sunny skies, warm temperatures here uh, occurred across much of the central and southern interior of the state today. Uh, not quite as warm as it was yesterday up over the northeast interior, but still into the 70s. But south of the Alaska Range, uh, temperatures in the Sitna Valley into, or actually the Sitna Valley, uh, the areas around uh, of the Kenai Peninsula into the lower 80s today, for example, Big Lake, up around uh, 82 this afternoon at 3 o'clock in Kenai Peninsula there, the uh, Kenai National Wildlife Refuge had 81 degrees. Otherwise, mostly sunny, Prince William Sound in across the North Gulf Coast with this uh, picture isn't showing up or this imagery is the extensive area, low clouds and some areas of fog here in the Gulf of Alaska showing up by this dark area here that's uh, gradually pulling up uh, toward the Kenai Peninsula and toward Kodiak Island, toward, not at Kodiak Island, uh, the state airport there reporting sunny skies this afternoon and sunshine up northward there into the southwest interior. And again, this uh, breaking, diminishing band of uh, moisture pushing eastward triggered some isolated to widely scattered thunderstorms along that feature all the way up to the Eastern Brooks Range. And a uh, little bit of scattered activity back to the west and then more steady light rain drizzle with some fog here occurring from right around Kivalina up to Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, on up across Point Lay to Wainwright, uh, picking up about a tenth of an inch of precipitation today, and that just reaching the Barrow area. And uh, pretty gusty winds associated with that front as well in advance of it. Uh, Teller here in the Bering Strait uh, on the west end of the Seward Peninsula, seeing gusts of 35 miles per hour and gusts to uh, 40 miles an hour occurred at Wales with uh, Cape Lisbon reporting gusts to 45 miles an hour. Not quite as strong as yesterday, but still pretty breezy up there in advance of this front. And it will probably stay pretty windy across the uh, Arctic coast, areas of the North Slope and the Northwest Coast through tomorrow. Down to the south, high pressure right along the coast, keeping it uh, fair. Low clouds, fog off the coast or along, but sunshine inland. Weak trough here brought a little bit of moisture to the eastern Aleutians today, but the uh, stronger front brings some rain in toward the central Aleutians with uh, winds gusting 30, 35 miles an hour. Tonight that'll lift northward of Adak and Atka, so winds will diminish, become a little more showery. 
area of rain pushes in and continues to increase tonight across the eastern Aleutians with a general slowly see a slow increase in the winds across the Pribilof Islands, but nothing too serious. Areas of low clouds and fog still extending along the, over the Bering Sea here, but uh, possibly clearing out toward Nunavak Island. High pressure inland now, right over the uh, lower Yukon River Valley area. And westerly flow around that continues to bring uh, weak surges of moisture eastward here. A couple of them crossing the Arctic coast, one moving to the east side. Next one back here approaching, be dropping in tomorrow. And some scattered showers with mostly cloudy skies from the Norton Sound area in the Lotto Hills up across the Kobuk, Selawik Valley areas into the northwest. And showers here shifting off into Canada and also diminishing. Some may linger into this evening, but look for a decrease in the clouds here with the Tanana Upper Yukon Valleys down into the uh, Copper River Basin. Low clouds, areas of fog will be pretty extensive here across the Gulf of Alaska and along the southeast coast tonight. The main high center just south of Kodiak Island. And for the uh, day Tuesday, mostly sunny, warm, with thunderstorms over toward the border, possibly in the afternoon there for the uh, panhandle. Sunny and warm, much of the interior here from the Brooks Range all the way down to the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula again, uh, Susitna Valley, Manuska Valley, 70s to possibly mid 80s. Nice day for Kodiak and that light westerly flow enough to keep the low clouds and fog out to the east with high pressure up in toward Norton Sound. Light winds and mostly sunny skies there as well. Should be possibly, hopefully mostly clear for St. Lawrence Island to Nunavak Island. Rain pushes in to the south or to the Pribilof Islands and across the Alaska Peninsula. Nothing heavy and the winds not all that brisk. Uh, maybe gusts 30 miles an hour places like Cold Bay. Back to the west. Low clouds, fog, drizzle, or showers with south winds of 10 to 20 miles per hour for much of the Aleutians and still passing areas of rain and gusty winds, especially on the central and western Arctic coast north slope to the Brooks Range. Should be a pretty windy day up there tomorrow again. And then for, Tuesday, or for Wednesday, high pressure weekly building in back here over Wrangell Island. That'll help push us another weak cold front southward to the Brooks Range. Whatever precipitation is with that likely hang up on the north side of the mountains there with not much reaching to the south. So mostly sunny again, central interior. Southward, south central Alaska, Kodiak Island. Look for some uh, moisture to possibly push into the Yukon Delta here with general increase over Bristol Bay. Another sunny and warm day for the southeast coast. Lows tonight there for the Panhandle lower 50s, lower to mid 50s here across southern Alaska to Bristol Bay where it reach, might fall into the upper 40s there for the peninsula, lower 40s up around St. Lawrence Island and 30s, lower to mid for the central and eastern Arctic coast. Highs for tomorrow, 70s, mid to upper 70s here for the Yukon Valley and you can see 70s extending all the way down to the lower Kuskokwim River area and mid 70s for Bristol Bay, King Salmon, mid 70s, mid to upper for McGrath, and again, 75 to 83 for South Central Alaska. And look at the temperatures warming up over the Southeast Coast, 70s to lower 80s. And for those lows, a little milder the following night here with uh, lower to mid 50s for your overnight lows and mid 50s here, South Central Alaska, mid 50s also over the Southwest interior, northeastward to Fort Yukon, mid 30s along the Arctic Coast, 40s for the North Slope and uh, lower 50s there even toward Kotzebue and Ambler with uh, lows in the 40s, St. Lawrence Island south to the Aleutians. Highs the following day back into the 70s here again over the central interior areas as well as south central Alaska, 75 to 82 Copper River Basin and 80s now pretty prevalent over the inland areas of the Panhandle. Uh, 88 to 85 about sums it up even out along the coast into the mid 70s. Contrast that with upper 50s, lower 60s along the Alaska Peninsula, Arctic Coast uh, 40s for the highs and the Brooks Range in the 60s. Seward Peninsula looks like it's trying to warm up a little bit there as well with uh, possibly reaching the 70s over the inland areas with 60s over the Cuscombe Valley. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Look for some IFR. Northwest uh, coast here, uh, Cape uh, Lisburn Point Hope, maybe Kivalina up around catching the central Arctic coast and then along or off the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Marginal VFR down to the Brooks Range on the east side and also spreading inland here across the Kobuk Valley. 
Back on out into the Chuck TC, more IFR, Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island. A little bit of a break here and then lots of IFR over the Bering Sea to the Aleutians, all the way to the Alaska Peninsula. Another band here right in across Togiak and Bristol Bays. VFR, Nunavak Island, right across southern Alaska, northward across eastern interior, and also up over the central north slope with IFR covering much of the Gulf of Alaska right up to the southeast coastline. And for the afternoon, that retreats back a little bit, but still hanging marginal there on the, uh, well, from about uh, Mount Edgecombe on down along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. Marginal VFR, Cape Yakutega into southern Prince William Sound, back to the southern Kenai Peninsula. VFR, though, mostly Kodiak Island, and the interior looking really good. Some IFR still from St. Lawrence Island through the strait and then up wrapping along the coast. Lots of IFR holds out here to the west. And for the Wednesday morning forecast, massive IFR out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians right up into Bristol Bay. That uh, system, southwest flow, pushing that moisture up to the coastline as far as the IFR goes into Kodiak Island. Looks like Fognac Island stays in the VFR zone and marginal VFR a little bit ahead there, kind of uh, hitting some kind of a wall so it doesn't spread too much farther than this uh, in the morning there with some Marshall VFR Eastern Norton Sound into Kotzebue Sound and uh, VFR in the interior. For the afternoon, we've got IFR up into the Southwest Mountains here and Bristol Bay, north side of the Alaska Peninsula, staying a lot of IFR out here over the Bering Sea, northward through the Strait and then up along and around the Arctic coast. Marshall VFR, Western Brooks Range, North Slope, but VFR here, Eastern Interior, down through Cook Inlet and to most of Kodiak Island looking good, North Gulf Coast, uh, marginal VFR, especially well along the Southern Kenai Peninsula as well, with IFR hanging just off the southeast coast, but VFR inland. And passes tomorrow, Anatovic starting out marginal, turning toward VFR, probably by noontime, midday or so, and that same forecast for Adigan as well. Marginal in the morning, VFR later on, Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR as well as rainy, good VFR again. Windy VFR and Isabel, same forecast. Uh, other than some high clouds, ceilings visibilities be unlimited. Mentesta VFR, Tanita VFR, and Portage VFR, Chilkoot and White. VFR, chance of thunderstorms here, mostly on those northern entrances. And for the freezing levels, at the surface now, even off the eastern coast there, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, 8,000 feet up to the Brooks Range, followed by 10,000 feet. Uh, pretty warm air mass aloft now in over the state, 12,000 down over the Alaska Peninsula, and uh, 10,000 over the western Aleutians. So looking at icing with the uh, first impulse of moisture coming east-northeastward on a rather strong southwest jet here. Look for areas of light to isolate moderate rime icing above, above 11,000 feet for the Alaska Peninsula back over toward the Perbolofs and above about 9,000 feet here over the western Aleutians. This is more of a lighter, probably no moderate at all, just some lighter mix possibly there. And up here to the north, a couple of bands in that westerly Arctic jet there, one shifting off to the east. Light to possibly moderate rime icing, probably more likely light though above about 7,000 feet. And for the jet stream, tomorrow ridging right up into southern central Alaska, kind of uh, being uh, cut off by that westerly 80 knot jet there coming across the north slope, but the entire pattern gradually shifting a little bit there. So we got one impulse here swinging in with the first front that's weakening and then more coming in from the southwest later on. But initially that's gonna mostly head off to the northeast for the 9,000 foot winds. 25, 35 knot winds here into the central Aleutians midday tomorrow. Falling back lighter toward the west and 20 to 25. These winds on the increase throughout the day uh, on Tuesday here, but staying light over the interior. But uh, between the Arctic low and the uh, high here south of Kodiak, good westerly flow through the interior, 30 to 35 knots, as high as 45 knots there on the central Arctic coast. And about the same at 3,000 feet. So taking a look at turbulence. Moderate chop over the northwest, eastern Arctic coast, Alaska Peninsula, and the central Aleutians.
We have cleaned over 1,500 miles of shoreline now. Basically, it comes down to just human muscle. I mean, we use chainsaws and knives. Find stuff from like Russia and China and Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia. It really doesn't matter where it comes from. We all just have to clean it now. Our goal right now in the next 10 or 11 days before the end of this year is just to see how much we, we can collect before we get to remove it. What you see on the beach is a fraction of what's out there. You can pretty much break it down into three or four things. Uh, water bottles, a lot of water bottles, styrofoam, fishing nets, fishing buoys. And that's 99% of what you find on the beach. Basically, just go along with chainsaws and muscle and uh, get the garbage, put it in sacks, and then from there, we haul it up above the log jam so it's out of any heavy surf or winter storms if it's gonna stay there for the year, and uh, put it in super sacks. So yeah, we just progressively work down the coast, just day in and day out. We have uh, like daily goals for ourselves that like if we're working at a pretty good rate, we like to keep on pace with about like, I don't know, about 20, 20 to 25 super sacks a day. So this is pile 102, and in this pile right now, we have two super sacks and one set of buoys. June 23rd here, this is what we've done today. Uh, we're up to 25 super sacks on the day, and I think for now we'll call it and just keep cleaning until tomorrow. My name is Hannah. And I represent a uh, organization in Japan called Japan Environmental Action Network. With over, what, 20 people working together to clean up the beach, this is amazing. Like, we all need to work together to, you know, clean up the beach as much as possible. So, like, every single time I go back to Japan, you know, I go, I, I talk to the fishermen, and the fishermen's like, it's a joke, but they're like, if you find any buoy with my logo, you gotta bring it back, and, you know, like, always looking out for that stuff. The crew's awesome. I mean, we're all skiers or snowboarders, and we're all friends. I mean, we're all good friends. My dad started it. He's the man behind the desk. He makes the ball roll, for sure. He works hard. He, uh, he doesn't give up easy, which is good. This stuff is uplifted quite a ways during an earthquake. I think my bag's about full already. Yeah. I'm gonna get the quick work back in here. Somebody else is back here. The thing about marine debris is it's kind of a hidden problem. Unless you're out there, especially on these remote beaches that are so heavily impacted, people don't see it. I remember probably a good 20 years ago, I, I was out on the outside of Montego Island and flew out there. And I was just utterly astounded by all the garbage out there. You walk out there and you wade through this stuff and you go, this isn't right. This shouldn't happen. I think a lot of it's just awareness. I mean, I've been boating out here for a long time and I wasn't even aware of how extensive the marine debris problem is out here. But uh, it's, a, it's a consumer world out there for sure. I mean, I don't know where people's values are, I guess, but Mine is, you gotta kinda have a little bit of respect for the environment and uh, considering we live in it. Especially in Alaska, I mean, a lot of people 
like the outdoors and like to be part of the outdoors. That's why they live here, and it's uh, they don't necessarily want to see it trashed. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis, uh, not a lot of change again for what we saw over the weekend here with, uh, again, still drifting southwestward a little bit or off a little bit more to the east. And then also uh, some of this breaking off the western Arctic coast, the white zone there, that was uh, shore fast, is now broken off and pushed out to the west. Otherwise, not a lot of change here going on over the to the east except for the expanding area here in the Mackenzie River Bay area that's now getting along almost right along the uh, eastern North Gulf or eastern Boulevard Sea coast there. Okay going on to the uh, coastal water forecast northwest 15 here on the north coast pick up to about 20 knots tomorrow south coast sees there five feet small craft advisories northern Lynn Canal 25 out of the north sees five feet about 20 knots for Stevens Passage and Northwest 15 there for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Wednesday, West 15, North Coast, Central Coast, Northwest, 20 knots, 5 foot seas, South Coast, same direction at 15. Light Northwest winds for Clarence Strait, not light northerlies for Stevens Passage and North 15 for Lynn Canal. And for Prince William Sound, light west winds at 10 knots, seas 2 feet. Northwest 15 here for the eastern North Gulf Coast. Back to the west, they become southwest at 20. Seas 5 feet, small craft advisories for the Barren Islands. 25 knot winds and Kamishak Bay west at 20. Otherwise, 10 knot winds for Cook Inlet. And uh, still, light winds for Cook Inlet southwest at about 10 here. Seas 3 feet. Kamishak Bay into the Barrens west at 15. Southwest 20, western North Gulf Coast. Off to the east there, becoming or becoming more westerly, but still at 20 knots, and winds stay light in Prince William Sound. Going to Kodiak Island, small craft advisories tomorrow. Southwest winds 25 knots, 5 to 8 foot seas. South 20 there from Sitkanak to Castle Cape. Alaska Peninsula, small craft advisories. Southeast, 25 to 30 knots, gusts 35 knots here. Gale force gusts on the Bering Sea side. Bristol Bay, 15, 1 foot seas. And then those become southwest at 15. The sea's uh, still pretty low at 2 feet, all the way down to Cape Sarachev here. West winds 20 knots from Cape Sarachev all the way up to Sitkanak and up the east side of Kodiak Island, southwest 20 for Shelikoff Strait. Fox Island tomorrow, specifically Unalaska Island, uh, southeast 25 to 30 knots, small craft advisories there. And then south 20 knots, central Aleutians, 6 to 7 foot seas east southeast to 20 for the western zones with uh, eight foot seas. And for Wednesday, we've got uh, south to southwest, 20 knots here for the western Aleutians, central areas, 
south to southwest 15 to 20 with seas 4 to 7 feet and for the Fox Islands southwest uh, predominantly at 15 with five, or 3 to 6 foot seas. Southwest coast, uh, southeast turn east to 20 here, north of Nunavak Island, small craft advisory St. Lawrence Island for 25 knot winds. Same thing for the Pribloffs up there out of the east and east 20 for St. Matthew Island. For Wednesday, southeast 15 for St. Lawrence Island. Light southwest breeze here along the southwest coast back out toward the Pribloffs, so they'll see 15 knots with three to four foot seas. And for the uh, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast winds lighter as you head east there, becoming 15 knots toward demarcation point out of the west. And then southwesterlies, uh, got brisk wind advisories here for the central coast. Small craft advisories back to the west up to 30 knots there, all the way down to Cape Thompson. Cape Thompson to Wales, south 25. And then on Wednesday, the small craft advisories, or the brisk wind advisories actually move eastward here, west 30 knots, eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, 25 on the central coast, and then diminishing as you head down the coastline to 15 from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, and then back up to 20, Cape Thompson to Wales, mostly out of the west. And for tonight, high pressure building into the southwest interior, and that'll make for uh, decreasing clouds as this batch of moisture continues to shift off to the east. Couple more impulses crossing the Arctic coast, one moving off to the east, that one about to come in. This front spreading rain eastward to the Fox Islands and possibly as far as false pass toward morning. Low clouds and fog, <coughs> excuse me, over the panhandle. Tomorrow, sunny and warm again, 70s to possibly mid 80s in some areas, cooler on the Arctic, or north, so obviously north coast and the Arctic coast and north slope with uh, some rain, fog and drizzle. Weakening front pushes rain into the Alaska Peninsula and that uh, really dissipates here. Some of that shifts off to the southeast. A weak trough keeps it unsettled over the Aleutians. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.